Hey guys, Key here from Kegland, and today we're talking about our new temperature control box. Now in the past, we used to have a very basic temperature control box where you just set the temperature and it controls a heating and cooling device to you know, keep the temperature in the right range for whatever it is you're doing, whether that be sous vide or, or beer making or wine making or fermentation of some sort. So this new temperature control box is really freaking cool. Basically, it uh, connects to your Wi-Fi network and it basically logs everything up to the internet and you can also can control this device remotely as well. The other thing it's got is Bluetooth beaconing. I'm gonna explain that in a little bit, in a little bit later. But let's open the box and have a look. This is what the temperature control looks like here. So as you can see, it's got a normal uh, you know, wall socket here. Now obviously we've got the Australian socket because we're in Australia, but we are making these for other countries as well, which is why you should always buy from your respect, your distributor within your country. So you know, don't buy one from America and get it shipped to Europe or Europe and get it shipped to the States or something like that because you'll probably end up with the wrong sockets. So yeah, it has the wall socket on, on one side here, which plugs into your main socket. And then it's got two outlets here. So they're color coded, blue is for cooling, and then red is for heating. So typically most people using this type of temperature control box will, you know, let's say you want to turn a freezer into a keezer. And obviously you don't want it to go so low, so you would plug the fridge into the blue socket here, for, or the freezer into the blue socket here, and just set, let's, let's say two or three degrees for your, uh, your, your keg temperature. Or let's say you wanted to make a fermentation fridge. We obviously do sell the um, you know, turnkey solution, which is our wrapped fermentation chamber, which you can buy separately. Um, but this little unit here, you can basically kind of make your own version of a wrapped by getting an old fridge, plugging the fridge into the blue power point here. And then what you can do is plug a heating device. So we've got like heating mats or heating wraps, for instance, and you plug that into the heating side and wrap that around the fermenter. That way you'll have complete heating and cooling, you know, and control it with the one controller. So the stock standard firmware is basically um, for heat, mostly for heating and cooling. But to be honest with you, one thing that we've already been considering is making other types of firmware upgrades so you can use it for other devices too. So for instance, let's say if somebody was doing hydroponics or something like that, and they wanted to use uh, the two outputs here, instead of using heating and cooling, they wanted to use one for turning lights on and off with a specific timer, and they wanted to turn, I don't know, a, a pump or some, a water pump or something like that on and off with the blue side. What we could do is come up with a new firmware edition, release it to you guys, and then upload it to, um, uh, to one of our uh, stock standard firmwares. You can download that and put it on the device, and then off you go, you get that additional functionality. So if there are particular applications like that which you guys are after, which we haven't made yet, please put them in the comments below, and honestly, we do read the comments, we do act on those, and you know, by, by making those requests, if we get enough of those requests, we certainly will make firmware upgrades for you. So um, yeah, please let us know. Now the probe on the end here, it's quite a long two meter probe. So the temperature probe on the end here, it's about four millimeters or slightly larger than that on the end of the tip of the probe here. It's a stainless steel probe, can be submersed in liquid and capable of controlling and sensing temperatures from negative 20 up to a positive 120. So over boiling point. So you've got quite a decent range you know, picking up on pretty much most of, uh, most of the types of temperature control that you're probably gonna, you know, be interested in. I should also say, as well as being Wi-Fi compatible and logging everything up to the internet, uh, where you can go onto the web and control everything, it also has a Bluetooth beaconing function as well. So uh, we're in the process of releasing a new firmware, it should come out literally in a couple months from now. Uh, and when it does come out, it'll basically update over your Wi-Fi network. So as long as you're connected to the internet with this device, you'll already get the latest firmware updates and they'll, they'll, they'll uh, populate onto the board itself. So um, with the Bluetooth beaconing, for instance, uh, we're working on another probe. This, this, this type of Bluetooth beacon probe should come out later on this year. And with this Bluetooth beacon probe, for instance, this type of probe goes up to 400 degrees Celsius. So that's you know hot enough to control, for instance, an oven or something like that. So what you could do, for instance, is pair the Bluetooth probe with this device. And instead of using the probe which is wired onto the unit, you can basically pair these two together, put that into, I don't know, maybe your turkey inside your baking oven or something like that, and use the temperature control box to turn on and off that oven temperature, for instance. So, you know, the Bluetooth beaconing function is really handy that it can pick up on really energy efficient Bluetooth beacons, relay it back here, 
and then that way it can use that information and also log this information from the additional probe up to the wrap portal as well where you're gonna see it. The other thing you could do is use it with other wrap devices. As you know, with the wrapped portal, we've got other you know, Wi-Fi devices which all work on the same portal and the same platform now. So um, just like I mentioned before, the wrapped fermentation chamber, but we've also got a wrapped digital hydrometer as well. So this is the hydrometer you drop in your fermenter and it gives off a, uh, you know, well, the stock standard setup is where it gives, it connects to your Wi-Fi and then gives off your, uh, your, your uh, temperature and also the, uh, the gravity of your beer or whatever you're fermenting and then connects the internet and logs that up onto the wrap portal. Now, the stock standard unit, I think the battery lasts one and a half years, so it's already quite long if you're checking every, uh, for instance, uh, every once an hour. Um, however, you can make this even more battery efficient if you turn the Wi-Fi off and use the low energy Bluetooth beaconing function. So that's another firmware which is getting released. So instead of, for instance, this connecting to the internet directly, this can use a really conservative battery consumption by Bluetooth beaconing, it gives off the Bluetooth beacon single, signal so this can pick up on it, this will receive that Bluetooth beacon, package up that data and send it off to the internet. And because this is plugged into mains power, we're not like so concerned about the energy consumption on this as we are as this device. So, you know, they all kind of work together. And that's one of the nice things about the whole wrap platform is we've got multiple different devices all coming out and to work in the same family. Anyway, let me show you some of the cool stuff and some of the cool logging that we can do onto the web portal. All right, so if you've got any of the wrapped products, obviously you want to connect them to the internet, so your local Wi-Fi, but the second thing you have to do is also go to your wrapped profile. So go to app, app.rapt.io, and you'll see this web page here. Now you can log in with uh, Google and Facebook, of course, too, but if I've already got a password linked to my email address, so I'm gonna log in like that. And as you can see, when you get in, you've got basically all the different wrap products here. So I've got a particular temperature controller, as you can see here. I've got like some other devices here below as well, which I've been also doing some testing and playing around on. And you can see the data logging here is coming up automatically. So I'm getting these overlaid graphs because I've actually got a temperature controller and uh, some other stuff that I've been doing heaps of testing on. Um, as you can see, I recently did a beer actually. So if you just go back in time here, let me just go back and I'll show you one of the temperature profiles that I put in. So what I've done on the, uh, uh, on the, on the hub here is I actually set a temperature profile uh, which looks like this. I'm just going to zoom in onto this section of the graph. Now you will notice we're doing active updates on this as well, like this graphing feature recently just got updated uh, only a number of weeks ago. And as we get more comments from you guys, we're also making additional uh, features and stuff like that. So um, when I go in here, you can see that I've got this temperature controller plugged into a fridge and a heating device, as, as I was talking about before. And I've got this set temperature here, and you can see the actual temperature here just underneath on that blue graph, just bouncing up and down like that, depending on whatever your hysteresis setting is set to. So I was starting this fermentation at 18, it automatically stepped up to 20, and then 22, then 24, and then it did this hop step here and basically went to a 14 degree temperature hold where I added some uh, dry hops before crash chilling down here. So, you know, that's kind of cool that I can see all this, log it all automatically and set the profile. So I didn't have to go and change these temperatures, you know, every two days, it automatically just was programmed in there. So I just made a profile, hit go, walked away and the whole thing was just controlled automatically. And then I actually got a notification at this point here, to go and add hops on my mobile phone. So if you add, if you basically add the uh, wrapped um, uh, app to your mobile phone, uh, you'll then get uh, push notifications to your mobile phone when stuff happens or when you've got certain alerts set. So that's a really powerful tool. The other thing you can do is go into other parts of the devices to you know just check on the efficiency and stuff like that. So over the right here, I'm gonna click on heating utilization and compressor utilization. So it is pretty warm in Melbourne. So as you can see, this uh, yellow little graph here has just popped up. So the compressor has been coming on, you know, 
know, around about 14% of the time. So, like, if this was starting to peak at, like, 80 90%, I would know that my fridge is barely keeping up, in which case I need to upgrade my fridge or maybe my fridge is about to die soon. So, you know, having this uh, data here is really useful because it gives you really good really good data uh, to, to know how hard you're pushing your devices, your fridge is really inefficient or, you know, chewing through a lot of electricity and stuff like that. So, yeah, really, really useful to have all of this automatically logged. And we store it for you guys for free. So, you know, as soon as you buy a wrap product, you're not paying on ongoing subscriptions to get all this and serve all this data. We're holding it there for you where you can get it anytime you like. Now, because this is such a versatile temperature control box and there's really many different applications you can use it for, we really wanted to make sure the mounting options were really versatile so you could change the mounting depending on what you're actually using it for. So, you know, for mounting on a wall, it's pretty straightforward and straight out of the box, that'll work straight away. So you've got these screw holes here so you can download a template uh, which will have these two screw holes there on the back. So you can basically put it up against your wall and then have screws interlock with the back of it if you just want to hang it. The other thing you could do if you just wanted to hang with one screw, you can just take this screw out here, flip this connector around like that, And then what we do is we have got this little hanging hook here. So if you've got a hook you want to hang it on or something like that, or even a screw as well, you could hang it like that. So that's another secondary option. The other thing that we've got, and this comes included as a kit, is this other mounting plate. So for instance, if you've got uh, maybe the wall of your garage and you don't want to necessarily you know, put a screw through the wall or anything like that, what you could do is get the mounting plate, get yourself some good quality double-sided tape and put that on the back. You know, we've find this 3M VBH tape is really, really good. It's a really excellent mounting tape. What I could do is peel off this mounting tape like that. Oh, stuff is really sticky. Yeah, like that. And then stick it onto the wall. And then I've got these little slots here. So these interlock with the back of the temperature control like that. So that just slides on in place. That way I could take the controller off, go onto the wall and then just slide it on like so and it would hold itself on the wall without being you know, permanently mounted or without having to put any screw fasteners in the wall. Now, another mounting configuration for you guys who are a little bit more complex and wanted to hide all the cables is when you want to panel mount this type of box. So what I mean by that is if I don't want the cables coming out the bottom here, what I can do is change it so the cables are actually coming out the back like this. So we've got a cleverly designed little panel at the base of the controller here and what happens is that can unscrew from here. There's a separate instruction sheet on this, so I won't go into, into, into this in the video, but you guys can download that instruction sheet and see how it works. But what it means is you can un, undo this, switch these plugs to that side, and put this plastic plate back in from the underside. So it will then look like this. So see how these plugs are all coming out the back. Now this is going to be perfect if you're, for instance, setting up a, a three-vessel brewery, for instance, and you want to drill holes into a cabinet, and then what I wanna do is basically drop all these cables through the cabinet like so and hide all the cables behind the control box. So that's a really handy application. The other thing you can do is if you're still using the mounting plate like this, you could actually you know, change the orientation to the base here and now this mounting place, plate sits on the base of the controller. So if I go like that and slide it in, you can see I can sit on a bench top type configuration like that. Now the other thing I wanted to show you is that if you're putting the cables in from the back, you probably want to mount it onto you know, a base plate or a, you know, a cabinet or some type of electronic enclosure, um, and then want to drill from the front. If you're going to do that, what you can do is peel the display off. I've already started to peel this one off here. Or oh, this is the membrane, sorry. So the membrane that covers the display. Now, if you happen to rip it or damage the membrane, the membrane is sold as a spare part as well. So just go onto our website and you can buy that separately. But once you peel back the membrane, you can see these mounting screw holes here. So this enables us to screw it to the, um, you know, for instance, onto the front of my brewery control box and then just screw it directly and then cover that screw back up so the screws are nicely hidden, you know, behind the display. So typically, you know, if you're setting up a three vessel brewery, you have one for your hot liquor tank, one for your mash tun and one for, for instance, your boiler, you know, you'd be able to report all of those different uh, things up to the internet. And look, if we get enough people request it, we'll make specific firmware for those different applications as well.
So that's it for that today, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. Hope you enjoy using the wrapped temperature control box. I think it's a freaking awesome device, which has so many features in there packed, uh, especially considering the price point. I think it's really, really great value. And that logging function, I think you guys will find handy once you sort of see all the data online. Anyway, if you wanna hear about all the cool new stuff, definitely subscribe now, bottom right hand corner, and also jump onto our Facebook homebrew community group. We've got a really active homebrew community group with tens of thousands of members now. Uh, sharing tips and tricks on how to use all the gear. The other thing is, seriously, if there's any, any other firmware updates which you want, please comment below. Put it in the uh, comments right down below. Say, look, we would wanna see you know, the hydroponic upgrade or I wanna see an upgrade for some obscure thing we've never even heard about. And if we get enough comments in there, we certainly will do it. We love hearing from you guys. So definitely, yeah, down below and we'll respond to anything that you, you put down there. All right, thanks for that, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.